What's good, family? So mash the like button, subscribe, and lick off the bell. This is honestly a madness. A true madness. This guy, before I even get into the news, in fact, you know what? Let's start with the news. Your man's, Canelo Alvarez, in the early hours of the morning, someone from Alvarez's team reached out to me and said, Why be? We got some, br we got some mad news we want you to break. I said, what? I can't lie to you. I was expecting maybe Alvarez versus some 175 Don. Next thing I know, he tells me, no. I want you to break the news that Canelo is going to be pushing a cruiserweight called Alunga Macabu's wig all the way back for him. I said, what? I said, have you got the... Have you got the weight divisions wrong, or is there some next African dude called Makabu in 175? One of them ones. He said, nah, the cruiserweight world champion, Makabu. That Don there at 200 pounds. We want him bad. Alvarez rock hard for him. I said, no way. And I can't lie to you. I said, listen, I'm going to have to take a few minutes for myself on this one. Just kind of process it. This guy, this is a madness, people. A true madness. Anyway, let's give you the, the official order. Let's give you the written news from the the people who get the news after me. Michael Benson said, Canelo Alvarez's trainer and manager, Eddie Reynoso, has announced at the WBC convention that Canelo Alvarez wants to move up to cruiserweight and challenge WBC champion Ilunga Makabu in his next fight in May, Cinco de Mayo. The WBC have approved this, so Alvarez will fight to become a five-weight world champion. Now, following up from this, ESPN also kind of broke the news after the YB did, and they said the following, Canelo Alvarez gets WBC's approval to fight Ilunga Junior Makabu for cruiserweight title. At the WBC convention on Wednesday in Mexico City, the organization WBC approved the request of Alvarez's trainer and manager Eddie Reynoso to have Alvarez challenge Ilunga Makabu Junior for the cruiserweight world championship. Alvarez, ESPN's number one pound for pound boxer, became undisputed champion at 168 pounds earlier this month with an 11th round TKO of Caleb Plantpot. With a win over Makabu, this would make Alvarez a five division champion. Now, Eddie Reynoso's trainer commented and made comment about this, kind of stepping up and said the following. I know, unlike anyone else in the world, I know what Alvarez has done and does with the heavy weights he spars with. And that is why we asked for the fight. We know Macabo is strong, but Alvarez can beat him. Many may say that is crazy. But they also said that it was crazy when Alvarez was a junior middleweight champion and we were looking for a fight at middleweights and super middleweights and light heavyweights. I have a lot of confidence in Alvarez. He is very strong and has many qualities and I know that he is going to win that fight. Wow! So you heard there the explosive words from Alvarez's trainer. <laughs> This, this is a madness, man. And I can't lie to you. I've got another video coming soon, but I'm going to break the news now myself. I'm hearing from my source that Alvarez is eyeing up Alexander Usyk. And it's quite amazing that, what do we know? Who was the first one to talk about that fight? Oops. No one else was. I'm not going to talk about that fight. And obviously, like I told you, I've got people in Alvarez's camp. So that's how it all kind of gets around. I told him, listen, Alvarez, if you want to go down... That's the YBs and the... I can't lie to you, yeah? If Alvarez, never mind beats, for me, if Alvarez dares to fight at heavyweight against Usyk for undis or for free unified champion, that for me will be the greatest f 
the greatest challenge in sports history. And if he was to win, I'm sorry people, not I'm sorry, it's the facts. For me, if Alvarez was to beat Usyk at heavyweight, yeah, that for me would be my favourite sporting performance in history. And it would make Alvarez the GOAT of all time. The number one boxer on my list anyway. Yeah? If Alvarez was to beat Usyk and, in, and do it convincingly. That would be the greatest sporting feat of all time. And that's what I'm hearing is where, where he's going ultimately. But anyway. I'm going to do a video on that in its own right. But I just like, I just like to put things out there. Because obviously people like to nick my bars. And, and But anyway. Let's get back to the point. The point is. Alvarez versus Makabu. Now. Makabu. Well listen. <laughs> Whatever you say about Makabu, he a cruiserweight and he a world champion. Yeah, they don't hand out world championships for nothing. Bottom line. And this actually, for me, I can't lie to you. Thinking about, like, after Alvarez turned out Caleb Plant, after Alvarez pushed Caleb Plant's wig back for him, yeah, I wasn't, I was struggling to think about what's next for Alvarez. I mean, you might know I was kind of pushing for the Andre Ward fight. And I still would like to see that fight. But, the reason I was talking about a retired man in Andre Ward was because there was nothing really going on. And I was getting quite sad actually, that we had such a talent in Alvarez. But it was I felt like it was kind of going to waste. And that's why I kind of mentioned about Alvarez and Usyk. But now, to hear that this for me has come out of complete left field. It's, it's a madness. But it's an inspiring madness. For me, Alvarez versus Baturbiev and Bivar, I just don't I just don't really rate them, man. Now, they'd still be interesting fights, but this for me is truly that this for me is that you kind of Alvarez versus Mayweather kind of stuff going on now, if that makes sense. This for me is that super fight level. Because when you have a fighter who has the skills. Because Alvarez, I'm afraid to say. Alvarez is just cutting through the competition right now. It's a fact. Cutting through them. It's not entertaining really. If that makes sense. It's not challenging. And it's a shame that these that Alvarez is so good. He has to go up so many weights. But that's the way it is. In this current era. Alvarez has to go up. To damn near heavyweight to get some test. But the fact that he could easily, yeah, sit back and say, Yeah, I'm a 160, 168 pounder. I'm just going to mill about and keep tapping these nice fresh booties for me. Yeah, I'm just going to keep snatching these cheeks. These small looking ass cheeks. Yeah. But the fact that he said, no, I'm not, that's not enough for me. I want to clap these big Don's cheeks. Yeah. I want to get me a big for nothing. It's just unparalleled. This right here is that, and I'm not being funny here, but Roy Jones is one thing, but these guys are different these days. John Ruiz, yeah? I mean, this is, and the thing is, people give Roy Jones a heap of credit for that. But these guys today, you sick in that, levels above John Ruiz. So Alvarez. He's just proven with this that he on another level, man. Psychologically, he on another level. Bottom line. Especially in today's era where it's all funny style. Alvarez really does sum the sport up in the best way. He's active. Four, three, four times a year. All the things I, I talk about and preach about, he be doing. Activity. Alvarez, and that's another thing. Alvarez fights. Like he's earning $40 million. Yeah. He don't go in there to take the piss out of the fans. And that's why he has such a strong fan base. People don't mind supporting him. Because you know. He's going to turn up and put a shift in. He ain't just going to flop around. Take the piss. Yeah. Goes in there. And he fights like. He getting paid $40 million. He don't take it for granted. And now. Again the fact that. Listen. Alvarez is going to get paid 40, 50 million dollars, whoever he fights. He could have sat back at 168 and kept, kept taxing these, these random dudes. 
And the thing is, it's not like... What makes this even more impressive for me is the fact that there's no financial motivation. There's none. To be honest, I think probably... Do you know what I'm saying? Like, let's be real now. Alvarez versus... Baturbiev. Or Alvarez versus someone's... I mean, Alvarez versus Golovkin. Which is a much easier fight than... I mean, Golovkin's old now. But Alvarez could sit back and say, you know what? Golovkin's small. He's old. I'm going to drag him up to 168. And I'm going to knock him out this time. And do it for the most money. Right now, I reckon, monetarily wise, outside of heavyweight fights, Alvarez's biggest fight would be Golovkin 3. And that's actually one of his... One of the, I reckon he'd stop Golovkin now. And that's one of his easiest fights, if that makes sense, in my opinion. He could sit back and say, what most people would do, is say, you know what, it's 2021, we don't care about the fans, all we care about is the bag in our pockets, all we care about is taking no risk, all we care about is taking the Michael at the fans. Let me sit back, take nine months off, and fight Golovkin on pay-per-view for $100. He could do that. And make twice the money of what he's going to make against Makabu. There's no financial incentive whatsoever for him to go up to one to £200. None. He's going to make less than he would at 168 I reckon. Now to be fair. And it's quite smart. but And I hope it does work for him. In as much as it may. Because of this challenge. This may bring in big numbers. This may end up bringing in Golovkin numbers. Because it's the... Wow, we go and he, this might be the one he loses because of the weight or whatever, if that makes sense. One thing for sure, if he goes to heavyweight against Usyk, that'll do one million and a half pay-per-views, I think, myself. That'll be massive. Alvarez challenging for a heavyweight world champ. That, that'll be massive, one point, and it should do, and rightfully so. And I think this Makabu fight should do a million pay-per-views. Because, yeah, Makabu ain't got the name of Triple G, but listen, he a £200 man. This is mad. And, and again, I hate to emphasise it, but it's, uh, I've got to say it, because no one else ain't going to say it. People, I mean, I've got another video coming soon. There's actually people, yeah, criticising Alvarez. No word of a lie. On this news that came out, there's people saying, out, there's one goofy Don saying this proves Alvarez is a ducker. He's ducking Andre, he's ducking Charlo, he's ducking Benavides. There's people actually saying that about him moving up to £200. Are you joking? The reason Alvarez is moving up to £200 is because none of them names you've mentioned, who are they fighting? Who's Charlo for? Charlo got whoop whooped in his last fight by a worse... F I'm pretty sure Charlo, yeah, got whooped by a worse version of Alvarez. That guy who whooped, who whooped Charlo was a worse version. Nowhere near as powerful, nowhere near as skillful. And he whooped him anyway. Yeah? Charlo had all that he could handle with that random Alvarez knockoff. Yeah? That was a knockoff version of Canelo who whooped Charlo. You got Benavidez. What are you doing? What are you doing? He was supposed to have fought. Caleb Plant. Instead, he stayed fighting bums. What's he been doing? And Poo Poo Andrade, I mean, to be fair to Poo Poo, he did try to fight some people, but who cares about him either? What's he done? No one cares about him. Yeah? Alvarez already cut through, for me, yeah, them calibre of guys. That's what, they're, the, they're at best the Billy Ho Saunders and Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant and Billy Ho, they're arguably the best of that bunch anyway. What we know is, for a fact, none of them names have whooped no one on that on Billy Ho's or Caleb Plant's level. Oops. It's unbelievable. But that's the haters fear. And the haters are mad. The, the, re, the real reason the haters are mad, yeah, is because Alvarez is doing things their, fight, their main fighters can't even fathom. Like, Charlo, what's he doing? Who he fought? Where's he going? These guys have been at the same weight for the last 10 years. Alfred's gone from 154 to now 200 pound. 
What's, where's your mate? Where's your best fighter at? Oh, he's still at what? He's still at the division he started at. Oops. Oh, oh, he's still fighting bums out of the division he started at. Tank Davis. Tuck Duck Davis. Seriously. True, though, isn't it? Tank Davis. I'm pretty sure Tank Davis said, oh, I'm not really impressed about the... Not impressed. Wait there, you're, you're, so wait there, you're at the same division fighting the same bums. Alvarez, guess what? Alvarez, not only is going up in weights, like most people, yeah. Most people who go up in weights, they fight some random name, don't they? Let's be real now. Who do you know who goes up in weights and fights champion straight away? Who does that? Most people go up in weight and say, oh, I need some acclimation fights. I need to get my weight. Oops. Alvarez goes up, skips a weight, and by the way, it's a big weight as well. This isn't the case of 130 to 140. 130 to 140 is only 10 pounds. Alvarez is going from 168 to 200 pound. That's 32 pounds, people. That's three times as much weight as the 130 to 140 jump. This isn't two little skinny weight divisions. This, if you actually work the maths out, this is the equivalent of jumping five weight divisions. Do you understand that? Because 32 pounds divided by five is six and a half. Six and a half is basically a division, isn't it? 140 to 147, there's seven pounds, so six and a half. 147 to 154 is seven pounds. Yeah, 140 to 135 is 5 pounds, 135 to 130 is 5, 5, see what I mean? 6, and if you work out all the weight divisions, 6.5 pounds is about the average. Alvarez is moving up 5 weight divisions. And fighting the best. I mean, I can't lie to you, I would have gassed out, I, I would gas his feet up, yeah. Even if Alvarez, yeah, was due to fight someone on the periphery, maybe someone who was a former world champion, I'd still be gassing it up, because it would show his intent, okay, yep, he's moving up five weight divisions, but he wants to get acclimatised to it, I wouldn't even knock, I wouldn't even knock that, because of how much the weight divisions are, I can't even lie to you, even if he went up to 175 and wanted a warm up fight, I wouldn't knock it, knowing how active he is, when a man's fighting three, four times a year, if he wants to have a few, a few gimme fights, who can knock that? I can't. Most of these guys, they fight him once a year, like Tank Davis, Tuck Tuck Davis, Buggy Davis, yeah? Tank, I mean, Javonta, Baby Buggy Davis, he fight once a year and fight a complete scrub. So, Alvarez going up three, four, five weight divisions and fighting... The, the top three guy, bottom line, he a better holder. He a better holder. Yeah? So he top four in the world. At worst, he's top four. And Alvarez going straight in there. This stuff, people, is unparalleled. It's never been done before. Yeah? I don't believe it's ever been done before. Because even with Roy Jones. Roy Jones started at 160. He won at 154. Alvarez fought Floyd at 152. Yeah? And that's another thing, the height. Roy Jones, I, I believe, is about 5 foot 10. 5 foot 11. Alvarez is 5 foot 7. Yeah? 5 foot 7. So it's completely different. Roy Jones had more weight. Roy Jones had more height. This has never been done before, people. And I'm just here for it. I, I am so, I've never been so excited before in my life to see. I mean, imagine if he stops Makabu. Imagine it. And that for me will be the per. Uh, and I pray it happens. I pray. And this for me has got me super gassed. I'm actually super excited for this fight. I wish it was sooner. But it's good. Alvarez, six months from now, May. Gives him plenty of time to pat the weight on. Now, some people will say, why be... How can he possibly go to heavyweight? How can he possibly go to cruiserweight as a, as a small man? 
or a relatively small man, listen, I don't even care. Even if I actually support it. For me to see these kind of fights, because guess what? No one else and exciting at them weights, I'm afraid to say. No one else has the balls to get in there and get stuck in. Look at AJ, for example. AJ's he's as big as you like, but useless. No balls. Yeah? So I'm afraid to say, if it takes someone who's 154 pounds born to take a little piece of juice and get in there and get stuck in and do what the naturally big men can't do, I'm there for it. I support it fully. Yeah? And I'm not saying he is juicy. I'm just saying, if he has to... If, if, that's, what, if, if that's what it takes for me to see you sit, get washed, I'm there for it. Because you man ain't doing your job, unfortunately. Yeah, And that's the thing. That's how the market works. Guess what? If fighters were doing their job, for example, if people like AJ were doing their job, I don't believe Alvarez would be looking up there, would he? I just don't believe it myself. The reason Alvarez is sniffing upwards at them ridiculous weight divisions is because you man are soft. You should be embarrassed with yourselves. Honestly, you should. You should be embarrassed. You're not setting pace. You're not setting ex an example. He smells food. Yeah? He smells you. You smell sweet to him. That's what it is. I'm sorry. Bottom line. The bottom line is, you man, you big for nothing man, smell sweet to Canelo Alvarez. That's the start. That's the end of it. You're sweet. So I guarantee you, that's why people like Roy Jones weren't sniffing to go up there with Lennox Lewis. Too spiteful. But guess what? Alvarez, yeah, sees a cruiserweight who couldn't punch in Usyk go up, bop one shot on Mr. Big for Nothing Mandela Gandhi's nose, AJ. You got bopped with one shot in the first round and your whole game plan... All the stuff he's supposed to be doing went flying out the window. You, Alvarez is thinking, wait a minute. I've lis I listen to the YB every day, and he's right. For Cruiserweight, who had no power at Cruiserweight, goes, goes up to heavyweight and schools the big for nothing. They're big nick. Yeah? Schooled him. Yeah? The big friendly nick. Yeah? Scored him. 100%. Got scored. Big, you big friendly. You are big and friendly, yeah? All the way friendly you are. You're the big friendly. 100%. You're all the way friendly. And he's thinking to himself, wait a minute. Not being funny. I was, I, in fact, I spoke, I'm, I'm going to leak this on it. I'm going to leak this in its own right. But I spoke to Alvarez. Alvarez said, why be? Truth is, yeah? I thought to myself... If they're handing out heavyweight belts, like they are, I might as well go and get myself a piece. Because Al Alvarez feels disgusted at the way the sport is being represented. And he's saying to himself, wait a minute. If a cruiserweight who has no aggression, who has no snap on his shots, who can't punch a cruiserweight, can go up to heavyweight and snatch all the heavyweight belts... It's my obligation to go up there and handle that light work. That's what he told me, 100%. Yeah? He refuses to allow the great legacies of former heavyweights to be disrespected. So if you big for nothing men can't handle your business, I'll go do it for you. That's what he said, 100%. He said if big friendly looking asses like AJ don't want to do their job, me at... Five foot seven, a foot smaller, will do it for you. And this is perfect for me. This is perfect. Because all you big dudes, yeah, should be ashamed of yourselves. All of you should. The fact this man has to come and handle your business for you. And I guarantee you this. No word of a lie. I'm betting on Alvarez to wash you sick. I'm sorry, I just am. I just am. Yeah, simple as that. I know what Alvarez does to men who can't punch. And Usyk can't punch. He slap. He another one. He a slapper. Yeah? But anyway. This is what you call peak boxing. I'm gassed again. I'm gassed for this fight. 
Yeah, I'm gassed for what this fight means in terms of the future. Because guess what? Alvarez, I spoke to him. He ain't going up to cruise weight for nothing. This is a heavyweight plan, folks. Yeah? He's seen the gap in the market. He's seen that. Wait there a minute. Yep. You sick and. I like that. He's sweet. I like that fight. You sick whoops AJ again. And I'm going to take the. I'm going to show them. I'm going to set the real pace. And I, I'm there for it. And I'll, I'll, I'll actually back him. I'll actually put money on him. Yeah? You sick. And I called it. You sick versus Alvarez. Alvarez going to win that fight. Too big, too strong. Yeah? A year from now, building into the weight, you've got six months of big training, get nice and big. And that's the thing as well, he, ain't got, he won't have to cut no weight. He'll be able to come in there. A lot of these fighters, yeah? A lot of these fighters, like Alvarez, they never actually fight at their best. Why? They're always cutting weight. Alvarez gets to go in there, a full 190, a full 195, just full of beans. Go all day, no cutting weight. You sick? Yay. He don't have to cut weight either, but he ain't got no snap to go with it. Cutting weight don't make no. Alvarez don't. I mean, you sick don't benefit from not cutting weight anyway. He ain't got no power. But Alvarez, anyone who knows anything about cutting weight, the first thing to go, yeah, when you go on a diet or when you cut weight is power. I mean, even myself. When I'm eating loads of calories, the weights I do are easy. If I cut, well, if I start cutting calories for two, three days, the minute I start doing some biceps, oh, I'm knackered. Guess what? Alvarez gets to go in there full of beans. We've never seen Alvarez full of beans. We've seen him. We've always seen him with some sort of weight cutting. He'll be going in there full of beans. Yeah, all the beans. And hopefully, get that beef as well. That's my opinion. Yeah, I think Alvarez should hire some Mexican mafiosi to go and touch Vada and tell him, listen, this is how things are going to go for this camp. Because the YB ordered it, yeah? The YB speaks for the people and he, we ordered this, yeah? Because guess what? You big dude, you naturally big dudes, and hands in your business. So Alvarez, in my opinion, has every right to use whatever he needs to to get a job done. Because at the end of the day, he's got plenty of disadvantages. He's five foot seven. He's, you know what I'm saying? That's the least, in my opinion, that's the least we can do for him. Is give him some juices. Yeah, so I've authorised it. And I'll speak for the people. The people are saying Alvarez should juice for this fight, 100%. For cruiserweight and heavyweight fights, you I mean, Alvarez should be given a juice exemption. Because that's what the fans want. I want to see a juiced Alvarez knockout. And I believe that's the fact. I believe Alvarez beats Usyk anyway, but I believe a juiced Alvarez will knock Usyk out to kingdom come. 100%. And that, by the way, that, just, that, wouldn't, that still wouldn't even level the playing field. Yeah? He'd still have a massive disadvantage. Of natural size. That said, he'd still knock Usyk out. Yeah? So, there we are.